Thank you, John. Thank you for having this conference. Uh, there are not too many churches that are willing to talk about these things, and I'm, I'm really pleased that John's having this conference. Uh, the, one of the ones that he mentioned, Dwight Dovell in uh, Appleton, Wisconsin, and uh, it was just a real uh, moving thing for me to be able to speak at Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa a couple of nights ago, the fact that uh, Chuck Smith is making a statement, I believe, by having someone like me come, which is there is great deception in our midst, and we need to be aware of it. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.11 says that, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. But the church has become ignorant, and one of the biggest devices is the Course in Miracles. And that's what we're going to talk about a little bit today. A friend of mine in Chicago said... Uh, Warren, why don't you start off with a joke? <laughs> and I thought about that, and I was trying to think, how do you do that with a subject like this? Then we kept talking, and he said that he lives in this apartment building that's pretty high up over the city, and he said he was looking out over the city, and he started to cry. And he said there were just so many lost people out there. And he said particularly Chicago, for some reason, just seems to be such a an empty place. He says it's so hard. He said even some of the crusades that have come into town have had problems there. And, you know, I thought of Jesus looking out over Jerusalem. You know, it's just, for someone who came out of the New Age, I, I, you probably just can't get it from my perspective, but everything that I was involved in is just exploding out there in the world. It's just, it's pouring across TV. It's streaming into the churches. Churches like the Emerging Church and the Purpose Driven Church don't really have any idea the things that they're incorporating into some of their teachings that are just so similar and comparable to what I did. Uh, it's, it, it's really sad. There was a critique written of my book, Deceived on Purpose, The New Age Implications of the Purpose Driven Church. It was written by somebody that was assigned by Saddleback to refute what I'd said, which disappointed me because I think some of the points that I made were just things that should have been accepted. They were just given that overlapping language, Things like, you know, Rick Warren saying that God is in everything, the prophecy is none of our business. I just thought, you know, maybe there would be some kind of an acknowledgement, like maybe, you know, these are things that we should be more clear on. But uh, this particular critic, um, I got kind of a kick out of it because he said, you know, he said, uh, I have to admit, even though we disagree with a lot of what Warren Smith says, I learned a lot about the New Age in reading his book. And he said, I had no idea that Bernie Siegel, the guy that Rick Warren used to introduce the idea of purpose, was a New Age leader. And I thought that was, you know, pretty good. I mean, that was like at least some acknowledgement. And, and I would hope that in future editions of his book, he would pull names like Bernie Siegel. Uh, I'm going to describe a little bit more about who Bernie Siegel is. But you just don't, you don't introduce the idea of God's purpose by by introducing a, a key New Age figure, a key New Age leader, especially a guy who has a spirit guide named George. It's just, it's not what you would call being real discerning. And I think that's one of the concerns that I have about these movements that are going on in the name of the Lord, the emerging church and the purpose-driven movement, is that there doesn't seem to be any real acknowledgement of the deception that's going on all around us. It's almost like see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. It's almost like the world's emphasis on positivity. I mean, we want to be positive here. We don't want to be negative. It's not negative to expose evil. The Apostle Paul said, it's a shame we have to talk about these things, but they need, we have you know, no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. We need to bring them up out of the darkness into the light so that we know what we're talking about. Uh, pastor I was just talking to said that he really hadn't heard of A Course in Miracles. Well, A Course in Miracles is going to be taught on Oprah's XM satellite, well, it is being taught on Oprah's satellite XM radio station as we speak, five days a week, an hour a day by Marianne Williamson. Before we get into the course, I just want to read a couple of statements. This first one is from New Age leader Neil Donald Walsh, who co-founded the Global Renaissance Alliance of New Age Leaders with Mary Ann Williamson back in the late 90s. Uh, Neil Donald Walsh, his book Conversations with God is, is in about eight different manifestations. Uh, books one, two, and three, Friendship with God, New Revelations, he, uh, What God Really Means. He purports to be saying to every, telling everybody what God is saying. 
And I think I said the other night that, you know, when somebody's saying basically, thus saith the Lord, and he's saying perverse things, you would really think that some of our leaders, you know, some of the people that are getting a lot of uh, play in the media, would say, yeah, we need to, you know, we need to, to help people with AIDS, we need to help the environment. But uh, by the way, Neil Donald Walsh is a false prophet. Don't listen to him. Uh, when they're on TV, you know, just saying, you know, uh, Marianne Williamson seems like a really nice lady, but, you know, she's teaching the Course in Miracles, and that's not only contrary to the teachings of the Lord, but it's blasphemous. And then, then people, you know, especially Christians, when they see Marianne Williamson showing up on Larry King with three U.S. senators, a former ambassador to the U.N., and several other dignitaries being included in a panel on what we can do after September 11th to make our world a better place. And she says every problem comes bearing its own solution, and that solution is a spiritual solution, and you know that her spiritual solution is a New Age solution. We need to know who these people are. If we're going to be sitting there watching Marianne Williamson on a show like that, it, 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 it's not a good defense to say, I don't watch Oprah. I mean, I, I've heard that, you know, like... Well, I don't watch Oprah. Well, okay, that's okay, but know who these people are. Neil Donald Walsh quotes God as saying, The 21st century will be the time of awakening, of meeting the Creator within. Many beings will experience, and that's the word experience, oneness with God and with all of life. This will be the beginning of the golden age of the new human of which it has been written, the time of the universal human, which has been eloquently described by those with deep insight among you. Spell that, New Age teachers. There are many such people in the world now, teachers and messengers, masters and visionaries, who are placing this vision before humankind and offering tools with which to create it. These messengers and visionaries, remember this is God speaking, are the heralds of a new age. Marianne Williamson said in one of her books, an underground revolution is sweeping the hearts and minds of the people of the world. And it's happening despite the war and terror that confront us. This revolution, by the way, a word that is used a lot by Rick Warren and Neil Donald um, and uh, Brian McLaren, revolution. There's a lot of talk in the, in the church about revolution. This overlapping language is really dangerous. This revolution is a fundamental change of world view, and it carries with it the potential to reorganize the structure of human civilization. It brings a basic shift in the thoughts that dominate the world. It wages a peace that will end all war. It's a global phenomenon that will change the cellular structure of the human race. Marianne Williamson also said in her 2002 book, Everyday Grace, Again, Marianne Williamson is the one that's teaching A Course in Miracles on Oprah XM Satellite Radio. This is hard stuff. I don't mean to be, you know, when I repeat stuff, I, it's just very difficult. And sometimes the way that the battle rages, it's almost hard to kind of grasp and understand this stuff because it's simple on one level and it's very complex on another. She said, there is a new peace movement emerging today among those who realize that our spiritual powers afford us tremendous opportunity to transform the world. We can imagine the world we want, we can become the people from whom that world would flow forth, and we can join with others in making it happen. There are millions among us who understand we are one. As we create deeper peace among us anywhere, the reality of peace becomes more probable everywhere. We can surround the world with a field of peace so powerful that hatred and fear will dissolve in its presence. That is why knowing the truth of our spiritual oneness and embracing it within our hearts is the ultimate answer to all the problems of the world. Remember the other night, spiritual oneness is recognizing that God is in everything. We are all one. We are all God. When they're saying oneness, it kind of sounds good, but they have deeper definitions that you need to know. At the level of spiritual reality, none of us is separate. That's a key word, separate. Separate in their language means that you are not seeing yourself as God. Oneness is seeing yourself as God. The opposite of oneness is separation. Separation is not seeing yourself as God. It gets confusing. They're using some of the terms that are right out of the Bible, and they're flipping them around. 
But separation, when you separate yourself from seeing that you're God, you interfere with the flow of energy through the body of humankind. I gave the analogy the other night of the Rockefeller Christmas tree where all the light bulbs, they throw the switch, boom, the tree goes on, it lights up, it's beautiful, everybody goes, wow. Well, if one of those bulbs doesn't work, the tree doesn't light up and everybody goes, what happened? There's a bad bulb, what do you do? You throw it out, you get rid of it. What the New Age says is it needs those bulbs, the cells that aren't, you know, seeing their oneness, need to be healed or they need to be eliminated. We're getting into the language that precedes severe persecution. Read this stuff carefully, it's all there. Just as stuff was telegraphed in, you know, Mein Kampf, this stuff is here. And it shocked me when I saw it after, particularly after September 11th, when I started putting all this stuff together, it was like the Lord was saying, you know, the New Age, which I knew had a, a central theme, there was, there was a real language, almost a, a hidden language that just laid out what they were gonna do. Community arising from the realization of our oneness is a community that goes beyond mere alliance or treaty. 20 years ago, she said, I saw the guidance of the Course in Miracles as key to changing one's personal life. Today, I see its guidance as key to changing the world. More than anything else, I see how deeply the two are connected. Wayne Dyer on PBS, Ray talked about him last night. Wayne Dyer on PBS standing uh, in a church that he said that I think Emerson's grandfather, great-grandfather, uh, preached in, sort of looking kind of like a, a psychology professor slash preacher, told everybody after September 11th that there's a spiritual solution to every problem. Wayne Dyer is one of the chief purveyors of the New Age philosophy. He's part of Marianne Williamson and Neil Donald Walsh's Global Renaissance Alliance. By the way, it's not called the Global Renaissance Alliance anymore. When you shine your light on something long enough, it's kind of like a snake that sheds its skin, and boom, now it's the Peace Alliance. And Neil Donald Walsh has backed off because he was becoming a little controversial, and now it's Marianne Williamson on the Peace Alliance. She's actually uh, pushing for legislation to have a peace department, cabinet level, in the White House. And uh, she's got a number of senators and congressmen that have already signed up. There's a political aspect to this. And the, the, the Christ that is not the Lord Jesus Christ, that is coming one day, is both a spiritual and a political figure. So it's interesting to me that they're going into politics. Wayne Dyer on PBS after September 11th, and by the way, it was a fundraiser night. Now, PBS will tell you, they don't, this is, we don't do religion, we don't push you know, religion or anything, but they got Wayne Dyer on a fundraising night, raising funds, you know, they've got the people out there and the breaks and all that. He says, you know, I've been studying something for several years, and the thing I've been studying is called A Course in Miracles. And A Course in Miracles is a very interesting collection of brilliant writing that I think if the world were living by it, perhaps we would have far, far fewer of the conflicts and struggles and so on that we have amongst ourselves and amongst our families. Daniel 8.24 speaking for the Lord, he said that the Antichrist will destroy wonderfully. And then in 825, and by peace he shall destroy many. Oneness. Genesis 11.5, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it, and the Lord said, behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. Brian McLaren is suggesting we have a new language. I just thought that was really interesting. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one spiritual language, so we can all speak the same spiritual terms, like the Bible doesn't already have that. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Marianne Williamson actually used that word. She said, you know, imagine. Imagine is to create in your mind, and that's what the whole New Age movement is. We can recreate the future by changing our thoughts, changing our beliefs, coming to an agreement, getting rid of divisive doctrines, and agreeing to these things, and then we're, we're all one, and then we're going to all hold hands like the big Rockefeller Christmas tree, and God, quote-unquote God, is going to shoot the joy of the force, which is what the, Mary, or, uh, Barbara Marx Hubbard's uh, interpretation from Christ is the joy of the force will go through 
all mankind, and there will be a planetary Pentecost, and all mankind will be born again. I don't think you want to be a part of that. Peace. Peace, peace, but there is no peace, said Jeremiah. Uh, peace has been used. There were, there were peace ambassadors from Gibeon that came down and pretended to be friendly, and they, they deceived Joshua and, and the, the rest of the people there because why? Because they forgot to consult the Lord. They didn't check to see if these people were really telling the truth. 1983, Bob Dylan had a song. He said, he wrote, he's a great humanitarian. He's a great philanthropist. He knows just where to touch you, honey, and how you like to be kissed. He'll put both his arms around you. You can feel the tender touch of the beast. You know that sometimes Satan comes as a man of peace. I don't think I've ever heard it expressed any better by a contemporary lyricist. The rest of the song is just as powerful. Peace, love, and oneness. Like we said the other night, that was the battle cry in the Hate ashbury Summer of love. What happened? It imploded. It burned out people all over the place. And, you know, it's really sad. I mean, I, I, there's people that are still feeling the effects from that. You know, they just, uh, they, they made some mistakes, and it's hard to come back when you, when you use the amount of drugs that a lot of people did. So what is the Course in Miracles? The Course in Miracles came about when a psychologist in New York City by the name of Helen Shukman at Columbia Medical College, heard an inner voice that said, this is A Course in Miracles, please take notes. The voice reputed to be Jesus. Jesus. Helen Shukman resisted and fought against this. She did not like this. She, she, she just, it, it, it frightened her. She didn't want to do it, but she said the voice had authority. And she was working with another psychologist by the name of William Tetford. And he worked with her and helped her. And for seven years, she took down everything that this Jesus gave her in spiritual dictation. And she wrote it down from 19, roughly 1965 to about 1972, 1973. And the product was 1,200-page Course in Miracles from Jesus. New Revelation the same term that Neil Donald Walsh used for his recent book. We have new revelation. God cares so much about humanity that he's changing everything he wrote in the Bible. He's writing a whole new revelation to, to help us get through these times. Do you believe that? I don't. I did when I was in the New Age. And when, when miraculously God put Johanna Michelson's book, The Beautiful Side of Evil, before me, and I saw scripture for the first time and started to have an, an understanding that I'd been deceived. If you read the New Testament carefully, which I'm sure you do, it's all there. It's like it's just weaved. You know, be careful, you know, be vigilant, be sober. Your adversaries, the devil will walk about seeking whom he may devour. Well, you know, I don't think he meant he's, you know, he's going to go around just kind of like beating people up. He's got things like the Course in Miracles that are devouring tremendous numbers of people. And, and what's so interesting is like I devoured the Course in Miracles. I thought it was wonderful. And the amazing thing is, is that when I converted and became a believer, the thing that felt so good to me when I read it all of a sudden was highly oppressive. I did an interview uh, years ago. Um, the, the man interviewing me held the Course of Miracles up. Bless him, because not many people you know, would even look at the Course of Miracles back at that time. He said, I can feel the evil in this book. And he read some quotes. I mean, he could literally, you can feel it when you're a believer. But when, when you're deceived, the spirit world... That part of the seduction is you feel good about what you're doing. I had a friend who, uh, who said she was really, just the purpose-driven life just did not interest her, but she felt like, well, I better, I better just look at it. And she said she started reading it, and she started getting real giddy. She said, I started feeling kind of, I felt kind of good. She says it made no sense at all. I had to stop and pray. You can't go with your feelings. You can't, you know, the, the, the whole thing from the 60s, you know, go with the flow. Well, if you happen to be fortunate enough to be in the flow of, the Holy Spirit, that's great. But, you know, most of us, you know, we kind of detour off, and it's not always easy to maintain that. Go with the flow. You know, there's a reason for everything. Meant to be circumstances conspiring to bring you to this wonderful place, peace. It reminds me of the old, uh, the old westerns where, you know, the, the, the good guy is having his boots shot at by the bad guy, and he goes, dance. And it kind of reminds me of September 11th, and, you know, everybody's dancing, and, and all of a sudden, while everybody's fearful, 
Out comes Oprah, out comes Larry King, out comes all these New Age leaders saying, hey, we have a solution. You know, we can, we can make this dancing stop. We can get some peace for this cowboy. I mean, it's just, it's just unbelievable how this is being orchestrated, not by Marianne Williamson or Oprah Winfrey or when I was in the New Age, being orchestrated in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, spiritual wickedness in high places. This thing's being orchestrated at the highest level. Don't think September 11th was some kind of you know, chance occurrence. I mean, look what's happened since then, all in the name of peace and safety and security. The Course in Miracles was, was written down and it was actually published in 1975. Very low key, uh, no big fanfare, uh, but it came out in 1975. It was, it was made popular to some extent. There were a bunch of us that were sort of in on the initial wave. 1979, Dr. Gerald Jampolsky wrote a book called Love is Letting Go of Fear. It was handed to me in a massage class that I was taking by a, a really sincere woman who was in the class and really liked the book. I read it. And, and Gerald Jampolsky had these wonderful things that he talked about, love and giving and forgiveness, especially forgiveness. It was like, you know, I, I wasn't the most forgiving person. And it really hit me, like, I need to be more forgiving. I need to... I need to really look at the best in people. I mean, who doesn't want to do that? I think the Lord's teachings are clear. That, you know, if we're to love our enemies, I mean, you can't say anything more than that. So I got all this stuff, and I really liked his little book. And he says, hey, everything that I've got here, you know, it was all given to me by A Course in Miracles. So, I mean, if he had said the Bible, I might have even started reading the Bible. But it was A Course in Miracles, so I went and got The Course in Miracles. I was surprised by the Christian terminology. I kind of went, wait a minute, what is this? He didn't say anything about it being Christian. And then I looked at some of the definitions and looked, well, this is a little bit different than regular Christianity. And I walked over to the counter and asked the man there, I said, you know, do you know anything about the Course in Miracles? And he goes, oh yeah. He says, I, I've been studying it for 16 months and it's changed my life. I went, okay, I'll buy it. You know, it's like meant to be. So here are the teachings from this Jesus of A Course in Miracles. There's no separation of God and his creation. The recognition of God is the recognition of yourself. Remember that uh, scripture that uh, says we preach not ourselves, but Jesus Christ, Lord? I mean, it kind of kicks in pretty good when you see that, you know, the recognition of God is the recognition, and we don't preach ourselves. When God created you, he made you part of him. Is Jesus the Christ? Oh, yes, along with you. Well, you know, that fulfills the definition of Antichrist in the Bible. I mean, you don't, you don't walk up to your friend who's doing the Course in Miracles and say, you know, you're studying the Antichrist right there. You say, did you know that the, that the Christ in the Bible is Jesus Christ? And it's not the same Jesus as the one in the Course in Miracles. And actually, the Bible describes your Christ in not so great terms. It's, it's, you want to be careful. You might want to pray about that. The name of Jesus Christ, according to Jesus, is as such, is but a symbol. It's a symbol that's safely used as a replacement for the many names of all the gods to which you pray. Christ takes many forms with different names until their oneness can be recognized. Remember, everybody's Christ. Jesus was just a Christ who came and showed all the rest of us, according to the New Age, that we're Christ. When you awaken to that and you understand the at one meant, not atonement, at one meant, spelled atonement, their, at, their atonement is at one minute. You save yourself by recognizing that you're God. It's a shift in self-perception, says Marianne Williamson. You recognize that you're God, that you're Christ. And we all link up, and then we have the joy of the force, the planetary Pentecost, we're all born again, and we forge on and fix, fix the world. You know, it's interesting. Um, Lee Strobel uh, has written a book called The Real Jesus. Um, a journalist uh, investigates attacks on the identity of Christ. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've read, you know, some of his other stuff in terms of talking about the Lord. And, you know, he's got some really good stuff that he says. But in this particular book, he gave the New Age almost a complete pass. It was almost missing from his book. And he made a statement. He said that, a journalist had said that Oprah Winfrey has gotten involved in so many things through the years that she really doesn't have any idea what she's doing. And I said, I said, no, she knows exactly what she's doing. She's been teaching consistently for since 1987 that I know of this very teaching that she, she said on a show about the New Age 
She said that Eric Butterworth, who Ray talked about last night, and who Eric Butterworth, by the way, is the first story on love in the Chicken Soup for the Soul series. She said that Jesus didn't, this is why Oprah liked Eric Butterworth, she said that he taught that Jesus didn't come to teach us about his divinity, but about ours. That was 1987. She's been consistent all the way through, as I'll show. Does that mean she's a bad person or that we should? She's just like the rest of us that bought into all this stuff. I mean, I, I think I said the other night that if I had her platform, I would have gladly gone on TV and given a, a speech on why we should all do the Course in Miracles. I did it in my hometown. It was Romans 10, you know, it just a, a sincere zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. We're establishing our own righteousness and not God's righteousness. You know, that's what Hosea said. My people, you know, are they're suffering from a lack of knowledge. We didn't know. I didn't know the Bible. You do. You're in a position to really help people that are lost. When you have friends that are reading The Secret or telling you that they're listening to Oprah or like the book that Ray talked about last night, what was it, Eat, Eat Pray, Love? You know, I mean, these books, you know, it's like you can't just snicker and say, oh, that sounds like Shirley MacLaine or something. I mean, these guys are serious. This is all coming together, and they're coming right at the church. I'm sorry to have to do this. Uh, this is Jesus. Do not make the pathetic error of clinging to the old rugged cross. You know, Buck was singing about the power of the blood. There is no blood. The only blood that you're going to see at the end of the Course of Miracles might be the blood of the saints. They do not relate at all to the shed blood on the cross of Calvary. They're talking about oneness in terms of, like in Acts 17, 26, it talks about, you know, that humanity ha hath one blood. You know, we come from an original set of parents. What's born of the flesh is flesh. But they're taking it to the next level and saying that we're all, ha we all have the Spirit of God inherently indwelling within us. So they're taking the shared blood, and they're making it look like they've somehow got the shed blood, but they don't talk about it. They just go right to being God, and that is not the way that it is. It's the shed blood, and we are one in Christ Jesus, Galatians 3.28 says, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, and the whole world isn't doing that. Dan Kimball, an emerging church leader, who's got, he, he, he calls himself an evangelical, and he, he repeats a lot of scriptures that uh, sound good. And uh, he's got a book where he, he writes and he says, they love Jesus, but they, they don't like the church or they hate the church, something like that. Well, you know what? That's not real deep. You know, I mean, I, I loved the Jesus of A Course in Miracles. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, 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 there's something about the emerging church where it's so easy for them to systematically put down fundamentalists and people who are being, there's a stereotype that's just being, Created, and I think it's really sad that it's being created by people who are calling themselves Christians. It's almost like if you, well, a friend of mine up in Northern California was looking for a church, and he walked into a, a church, and, and uh, the, the greeter said, Oh, how quaint, you've got your Bible. <laughs> he said, I should have known right then that I should have left. But. And, then, and then he went to another church, and, and, and they said, he said something about, Well, I. I went to Calvary Chapel one time. I kind of like that. And they go, oh, yeah, that's, isn't it that church that teaches the Bible? I mean, it's getting bad out there. You know, it's getting really, it's getting really weird. The journey to the cross should be the last useless journey, says Jesus of the Course in Miracles. The atonement is the final lesson that he need learn, for it teaches, that man need learn, for it teaches him that never having sinned, he has no need for salvation. You're not persecuted, nor was I. There's no sin. It has no consequence. Innocence is wisdom because it's unaware of evil, and evil does not exist. I mean, we're not talking lightweight stuff here. We're talking total blasphemy. This one's a little lengthier, but it's worth reading. Jesus says this about the devil. The devil's a frightening concept because he seems to be extremely powerful and extremely active. He's perceived as a force in combat with God, battling him for possession of his creations. The devil deceives by lies and builds kingdoms in which everything is in direct opposition to God, yet he attracts men rather than repels them, and they are willing to sell him their souls in return for gifts of no real worth. This makes absolutely no sense. No devil. Marianne Williamson is teaching this on Oprah and Friends XM Satellite Radio, and the lessons, the daily lessons, are being posted on Oprah.com. Here's a few of the lessons. 
you do, there's 365 lessons you do one each day all year. What you do is you, you completely change your whole way of thinking. You have a new world view. It's a thought reversal. That's exactly what Marianne Williamson said on the first day, was that you're going to substitute a, a belief system based on fear, and you're going to substitute it with one based on love. Okay, fear. Fear, according to the New Age, is your fear of recognizing that you're God. Fear of God. It's really backward. Love is recognizing that we're all love. Everything's love. Only love is real. God is love. Therefore, we're all one. But they're not, they're not taking it all the way. Like they, I have yet to, to hear Oprah or Marianne Williamson say, Oh, by the way, everybody, A Course in Miracles is from Jesus. It, was, it, it came through a, a psychologist in New York City in 1965. She, it was spiritual dictation, and she wrote it down for seven years. And so this is from Jesus. They, they, they know that there's going to be a reaction. They're just, they're, they're, there's this language, you know, separate versus oneness, fear. Hey, you know what hatred is? Hatred is not recognizing that you're God. Here's the, here's the line. Hatred is begotten of separation. Think about that. Hatred is begotten of separation. Separation is not believing that you're God, so hatred is begotten of not believing that you're in God. The only sin is not recognizing your sinlessness. The only devil is thinking that there is one. You know, Jesus said, they called me Beelzebub. They're going to call you Beelzebub too. We're there. I've got quotes. The only thing that's Satan is not believing that you're God. I mean, how backward is that? A few of the lessons. I'm determined to see things differently. God is in everything I see. I've invented the world I see. My holiness envelops everything I see. My holiness blesses the world. My salvation comes from me. Forgiveness is the key to happiness. Forgiveness is another one. Forgiveness is recognizing that your brother and your sister is God and not seeing anything else. You, you are forgiving them of your misperception that they, they were, you know, not God. I mean, it, it, it's just unbelievable. All the definitions have different meanings. The salvation of the world depends on me. Why? Because each one of us, according to the New Age and to the Course, is a cell in the body of humanity. A body does not want to have any cells that are not recognizing their function to be God. So if we're all cells, they recognize that we're all cells in the body of humanity, but if we're resisting and saying, no, we're not God, then we're going against the body, and they describe us as what? Cancer cells. What do you do with cancer cells? You give it chemo, you get it healed, you do whatever, or you get rid of them. They've got this. And I, I'm not trying to scare people, but if you go to reinventingjesuschrist.com, I've got two years of research written down there online, and you can go to chapter two, and you can read about the selection process, and you can read about what they've got in store if they get to where they want to get to. And they're getting there pretty fast. I was, frankly, shocked. And I'm not that shocked by the New Age, but I was shocked that Oprah actually was putting this out there the way she was. You know, like, we're going to teach it. I mean, not like, hey, you get this book, you know, it's a good book. I mean, she does that. She did that with the course years ago. I'm going to teach it because we want you to reverse your, thought, your, your uh, thoughts and we want you to have a whole new world view. Why? So the world can come together and have world peace. Robert Schuller just had a Rethink conference. You know, former President Bush was there. Rupert Murdoch was there. Rick Warren's wife, Kay Warren, was there. Lee Strobel was there. What are they rethinking? They're playing right into this whole thing of rethinking a world view. And what do they need to do, according to Schuller and some of his writings? Well, we need to come up with a single standard that will work for all. And Neil Donald Walsh said that his God commended Schuller for being an extraordinary minister, and he's the kind of guy that can make the bridge from the church to the New Age. Is it any, is it any surprise that Robert Schuller had Course in Miracles groups going on on his Crystal Cathedral campus in the 1980s while pastors like Rick Warren, Bill Hybels, and thousands of others were coming to learn how to have a big church. Robert Schuller had the Crystal Cathedral. People wanted big churches. There's a spirit on that campus that had to have pervaded these men because now they're just doing all the things that you would expect of pastors that are going off the beam. The little book that Gerald Jampolsky wrote that I had at the very beginning. It said, this book is dedicated to Helen and Bill, who have been both teachers and friends to me. It's because of their joint willingness that A Course in Miracles came into being. 
the work that provides the foundation of this book. Nobody, he's not making any secret about the fact that, that The Course in Miracles is what inspired him. Gerald Jampolsky was a guest on Robert Schiller's Hour of Power in the early 1980s. He's also mentioned in the 1982 Schiller book, Self-Esteem, The New Reformation. Rick Warren's going for the New Reformation right now. Who else is going for the New Reformation? Brian McLaren is. What is a New Reformation? What, we've got the Bible. We've got everything we need. What is emerging other than deception? What's emerging? If you look up emerging in the dictionary, which my wife did, it actually talks about something that comes up out of fluid, like out of water. You read Revelation, it says the beast's going to come up out of the sea. What is emerging here? Emerging has been used as a term, emerging or emergence, over 700 times by New Age matriarch Alice Bailey. Maitreya, a Christ who says he's on earth right now, waiting to come forth when humanity calls him, a man whose teachings dovetail with Neil Donald Walsh's A Course in Miracles and every other one, they're all consistent. There's a newsletter that is, comes out of his organization, and it's called Emergence. Barbara Marks Hubbard, a teacher that I had uh, studied, uh, particularly after September 11th, who purports to be involved with the Christ, her latest book is called Emergence. It's overlapping language. It's all over the place. I don't understand how people can get so excited about these new movements. And why do we have new movements? Why do we have new theological models? To distract us from the truth. Just as I was distracted by my New Age stuff, it felt so good, how could it not be right? And I don't doubt that people that are involved with deceptive teachings in the church today are feeling really good about it because the spirit world makes you feel good about it. You know, it's like whatever you're reading or doing and some of these books, it's just, you know, it's happening very fast. 1992, my book, The Light That Was Dark, basically warning about the New Age and particularly A Course in Miracles is being edited in Chicago, Illinois, in February of 1992. And lo and behold, on Oprah in February 1992 in Chicago, Marianne Williamson shows up, an unknown author on Oprah's program, and has a book called A Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles. Oprah opens her program saying this about Mary, Marianne Williamson. A, she's a leader in a philosophy I personally know could change the world. I just read you The Course in Miracles. Oprah thinks that can change the world. It can for ultimate degradation. Pray for Oprah. I, 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 think she, I, I really believe this woman wants the truth. I think if she knew that this was wrong and that the Bible really was true, which she doesn't believe, I really believe that she'd be one of our fiercest advocates. She'd be like the Apostle Paul. Pray for her. Pray that her eyes would be open and that she wouldn't follow these people. Eric Butterworth, Maya Angelou, who introduced Eric Butterworth to her probably because that was one of Maya Angelou's favorite books and she had a big influence on Oprah. I believe that in my heart, she said. I've read many books over the years. I've never been as moved by a book as I have by Marianne Williamson's book, A Return to Love. So moved, in fact, that I went out and bought a thousand copies and will be giving you all a copy before you leave here today. I really do believe the message of A Return to Love is the message we all need in our lives. If it sounds like I'm trying to hype the book, I really am. It's the first time you can open a book and actually see some answers. <clears throat> Excuse me. Well... How did Marianne Williamson get involved in The Course in Miracles? Probably the same way that I did. You know, you're lost, you're looking for answers, and this stuff just comes in. There's a saying in the New Age, you know, when the student's ready, the teacher appears. Well, <laughs> what teacher and what kind of a student? I mean, when the student's ready, a spiritual temptation will come in, you know, too. You know, it's like I, I, I've met too many people where God just unilaterally comes to somebody and saves them from all temptation and deception. We, we have to have some kind of a standard. Marianne Williamson... In my book, Deceived on Purpose, The New Age Implications of the Purpose-Driven Church, I wrote, New Age leader Marianne Williamson claims that a number of years ago, after a nervous breakdown and in the midst of her study of A Course in Miracles, she met Jesus. One night she said she felt the presence of Jesus by her bed. I was not normal and I knew it, she said. Not understanding the deceptive spirit world and the importance of testing the spirits, she started talking to the presence that she assumed was the real Jesus. This biographer goes on to relate that Marianne Williamson said, so I said to Jesus, look, if you can give me back my life, if you can restore me somehow, then I will do whatever you want me to do for the rest of my life. Like people make a pact with the devil, 
I made a pact with Jesus. What Jesus? The Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11, 4, he said to the Corinthians, he said, you know what? If another Jesus comes along with another spirit, another gospel, you might just go along with it. Well, I can't make fun of Marianne Williamson because I did the same thing. I didn't happen to have him come, this spirit come to my bed, but I accepted this Jesus into my life. I, I, those of you that were here the other uh, night, I was told by a psychic that I had a lot of help on the other side. I mean, I basically did what Marianne Williamson did on another level. I was told, ask the other side for help. So I prayed and said, you on the other side, I want your help. I want to be more spiritual. I want to grow. And I opened the door. Marianne Williamson opened the door there. In, that was 1992. And I did some interviews uh, on the radio. And one of the ones that I did was with Songtime USA on the East Coast. This man called me back, Lauren Decker. He's now one of my really good friends. He said, hey, Warren, he said, you know, why don't you do a six-minute sh- spot every week based on 1 Peter 5.8 and just expose some of the New Age stuff? So I said, okay, that, that sounds good. So I, you know, we did a six-minute spot every week. And one of them was, I said, I'm sorry to tell you people out there, but the Course in Miracles has hit the platform of the Crystal Cathedral. You know, Course in Miracles groups were going on there, and Robert Schuller has been involved with Jerry Jampolsky. Well, a woman that was shocked, wrote the Crystal Cathedral. And uh, she said, hey, is this true? You know, are you guys doing the Course in Miracles? Here's, oh, here's the letter she got back, which was forwarded to me as if to tell me, what are you talking about? The minister of caring at the Crystal Cathedral said, thank you for your letter in question. We do not believe the Course in Miracles to be a Christian course. According to the study we have done on it, while they use spiritual terms, including the name of Jesus, their basic tenets are not compatible with orthodox Christian beliefs. They do not accept Jesus Christ as the only Son of God, the only way to the Father, nor do they believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as being the divine three in one. We believe the Bible is the final revealed word of God and that sin and atonement are forgiven and bestowed only through personal repentance and acceptance of Jesus Christ as one's Lord and Savior. We do not believe that we can create our own reality by overcoming our illusory worldview. I trust this clears up any misunderstanding which you have about false beliefs, the basic beliefs of the hour of power, little Freudian slip there, and its differences from the Course in Miracles. Well, that was sent to me, and I went, well, that's not accurate. So I called the Crystal Cathedral, and I've tracked down the Minister of Caring. I said, because a friend of mine had called the Crystal Cathedral in the mid-80s and found out that they were referring people to the Miracle Distribution Center to get their Course in Miracles groups for the Course in Miracles books for the groups that were meeting at the Crystal Cathedral. This woman said, no, that, that's just not the case. I said, would you like the room numbers, you know, where the c- groups were meeting? Because my friend got those. She goes, yeah. Talked to her again, like maybe a week later. She said, you're right. They were doing some groups, but they're not doing them anymore. I said, are you sure? She said, no. The, I, she, she said, you know, you saw the letter that we sent. That's what we believe. I don't know that this woman isn't completely sincere and just being used by the Crystal Cathedral. I, my sense was that she really believed that. So I told her, I said, you know, I was involved with this stuff. I'd be glad to come down to the Crystal Cathedral and do a little workshop or whatever, talk to Robert Schuller or whoever, and, you know. So she wrote a letter, and she said, Thank you so much for sending me your excellent book. I just finished reading as I returned from the East Coast. I'm so anxious to share it with many others. I do like the fact that the book is written in such a way that a person who is involved with any of the cults or metaphysical religions can read it from the beginning without being threatened. The clear description of your sincere search for spiritual peace and fulfillment, I think, parallels the path of many who are caught up in the deceits of Satan. You don't ever hear Robert Schuller talking too much about Satan. This, at least she, I do wish I had known about the book and you last year as I taught on the cults, including A Course in Miracles. I would really appreciate your continued prayers that God would open the eyes of those who are involved in the ministry to the dangers of this course. I continue to be concerned at the naivete of so many. I told my wife, I said, is she trying to kind of like tell us to pray for Shula? Does she know? I mean, this woman seems to have a grip on it, but yet she's basically putting, you know, back off. You know, we're, we're not doing it. I found out when I was researching the New Age implications of the Purpose Driven Church and Rick Warren's being very influenced by Robert Shuler. I'm sorry, he doesn't, he doesn't want to admit that, but, you know, he was. There's just indisputable proof, including his wife saying that Shuler had a profound influence on him. I found out that two years after that letter where she talked about the course being exposed as a cult, where she was going to you know, maybe have me come down and speak, well, they didn't ever ask me. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Here's what Robert Schuller 
was saying on a video two years later after that denial by, by the Minister of Caring. He said on this video, you know, it's been my joy to be the friend of many great psychiatrists of the century. One is Dr. Gerald Jampolsky, and he was a Jewish boy that bar mitzvahed at 12, and the next year he, his rabbi left the sacred calling to become a stockbroker, which really disillusioned this little boy. And he thinks as he analyzes it now, he became an atheist at that point in time. He became a young atheist. He went to medical school, became a very brilliant medical doctor, but he had problems himself as all humans do. Then he became a believer in God. That's a long story. Gerald Jampolsky seems to be a really nice guy. I mean, he's just deceived. Schuler knows what he's doing here. Schuler knows what the story is. Here's the story of how Gerald Jampolsky became a believer in God. This is, these are Jampolsky's words. After being touched on the head by a peacock feather by Swami Baba Muktananda, an Eastern <laughs> guru, he said, after sitting quietly for five minutes, my body began to quiver and shake in an indescribable manner. Beautiful colors appeared all around me, and it seemed as though I had stepped out of my body and was looking down on it. Part of me wondered if someone had slipped me in a hallucinogenic, a hallucinogenic drug or I, or I was going crazy. I saw colors whose depth and brilliance were beyond anything I'd ever imagined. I began to talk in tongues, a phenomenon I'd heard about but discredited. A beautiful beam of light, Satan comes as an angel of light, came into the room and I decided at that moment to stop evaluating what was happening, stop evaluating, and simply be one with the experience to join it completely. Although I usually have a high energy level for the next three months, it was heightened and I required very little sleep. I was filled with an awareness of love, unlike anything I had ever known before. The power of this experience made me want to take a new look at everything I was calling real because I had glimpsed a reality that is not limited to the physical plane. This was an important step toward a complete reappraisal of my concepts about God and spirituality. Although I didn't know it at the time, this experience was to prepare me for my encounter with A Course in Miracles a year or so later. He's been teaching The Course in Miracles ever since. Schuler knows it. And I guess there's no other way to say it, but Robert Schuler is a grievous wolf. He, he does not tell the truth. I don't know why he's still around. I don't know why he just had a rethink conference where Christian leaders are attending and giving him their credibility, whatever that is. It doesn't make any sense. He's online with A Course in Miracles. Neil Donald Walsh and his God are commending him and talking about him being a bridge from the church to the new age. You know, in the, in the church of Ephesus, which, which commended for getting rid of their false teachers, Robert Schuller wouldn't have lasted 10 minutes. I don't understand it. There's got to be some tremendous blindness going on. Oh, and then, by the way, you know, Rick Warren said, well, I've only, I've only met Robert Schuller one time, one-on-one, -on -one, and, and I've been around him twice or something. That was his response. Meanwhile, if I can find this, it's, it's just remarkable. Bruce Wilkinson, who was right there when the, the peace plan was being introduced by, uh, by Rick Warren. Bruce Wilkinson is described by Rick Warren as one of his very best friends in the world. Well, all, while these denials are going on about Schuler, and, and I think the chief apologist for Rick Warren said, stronger than, than I said, he said that Robert Schuler is a heretic liberal and a true New Ager. This is Rick Warren's public apologist who's refuting what we're saying, what we're trying to bring up. Meanwhile, one of Rick Warren's very best friends in the world, Bruce Wilkinson, who was at the Crystal Cathedral the week before Rick Warren opened his peace plan, he came to, to, the, to uh, Saddleback Church and was there. His book, The Dream Giver, God's Dream, that was what Rick Warren called his peace plan, God's Dream for You and the World, God's Dream is a Robert Schuller term out of the 1982 Self-Esteem New Reformation book that references Jan Polsky. I mean, you, these things are all kind of interweaving. There's Bruce Wilkinson, almost at the same time the public apologist is saying that Schuller is a heretic liberal and a, and a true New Ager. And here's Bruce Wilkinson in the Crystal Cathedral at the podium on April 24th, two, 2005. Here's Bruce Wilkinson. I love this church. I love being here. I love walking on this property. I just felt like I was one step away from heaven when I came on this property this morning. I read a book this past week. Somebody gave it to me, and it traced the past 50 years of Christianity in America, and it began to talk about how the transition occurred in our country that eventually led to Secret Service. It led to Rick Warren. It led to Bill Hybels and Willow Creek. And do you know this book? You probably haven't seen it yet. This book brought all this back to a person who said that this was the grandfather of it all, who influenced this person, this person, and this person, and from that it became the massive movement it is today. And the person they named in the book was none other than the pastor of this church, Robert Schuller. 
That's amazing, ladies and gentlemen, truly amazing. It's truly amazing. Yes, congregation is now on their feet giving Schuler a standing ovation. This is Rick Warren, one of Rick Warren's very best friends in the world. Be good if they, maybe he's only been, you know, maybe he's only sat with him one time or only been around him twice. <laughs> then Wilkinson says, you know, it's only if you are a visionary do you know the price tag it takes to be the real leader. There might be some real truth in that statement. I mean, way out front on the edge, people like to shoot people on the edge. Well, let me see if I get this right. One of Rick Warren's really be good best friends, Bruce Wilkinson, is leading the congregation in a standing ovation and calling Schuler a, 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 a true leader and, and warning about people who shoot people around the edge. And then Rick Warren's public apologist, I'm not going to say his name, <laughs> his public apologist says that Schuler's a heretic liberal and a true New Ager. This is double speak. This is, you know, David talked about those of a double heart. Paul talked about double tongue. In James, it's called, you know, double mindedness. You know, double mindedness, it, it, it's speaking out of both sides of your mouth. It's confusing. You guys are all pretty nice people. Somebody, you know, somebody tells you, hey, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Okay, you back off, you know, you don't press. But when you get enough information, I wrote this book, Deceived on Purpose, came out in August of 2004. I couldn't believe it. In October, like just a couple months later, who does Robert Schuler have on his program? Gerald Jampolsky. He welcomes him like a conquering hero who's come back from the wars. He goes, oh, you've come a long way, Gerald, since you've been here the last time. He says, you've got a new book, Forgiveness, and the book has 35 references to A Course in Miracles. Jan Polsky in the book says that The Course in Miracles changed his whole belief system. And Schiller says it's a fantastic book. You can get it in the Crystal Cathedral Bookstore. It was in the Crystal Cathedral Bookstore when former President Bush and, and, and Lee Strobel and Kay Warren and all the rest of them piled in to give Schuler credibility that he does not deserve. I don't have anything personal about Robert Schuller, but, you know, I don't want to go back into the New Age. And I don't want to go back into The Course in Miracles. And I don't know why he's pushing that. I wish he'd be honest. If he likes The Course of Miracles that much, go over to the other side. Hey, I converted to the New Age. My name's Robert Schuller. You know, that would be honest. You know, I mean, I respect him for that. He has a right to do that. But what he's doing is deceptive. And, you know, to fire off these letters saying, you know, like we are exposing it as a cult. Again, she was probably sincere, but they're using her at best. I mean, if she's, if, if she's as sincere as she seemed to be, Schuler should have had her in the pulpit rather than Jerry Jampolsky because she was at least, you know, she was right on in terms of scripture. So after September 11th, all these New Age leaders are pouring forth. We need a new solution. We need a new worldview. All of them like the Course of Miracles. All of them are touting the Course of Miracles. Oprah's pushing the Course of Miracles. Do you think maybe there's an agenda going on here? Do you think maybe there's, they're trying to kind of change the gospel, new revelations? Jesus Christ, Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. He died on the cross for our sins. It wasn't a journey, a useless journey. We didn't make a pathetic error by clinging to the old rugged cross. Something happened there. And, I, and Johanna Michelson showed me that something happened there by taking me to Scripture. I didn't just believe Johanna Michelson. As much as I liked her story, it was the Scripture that convicted me. Most of us in the New Age didn't read Scripture. Neil Donald Walsh says a new spirituality truly is emerging upon the earth and the idea of oneness is at its core. So here is the new spirituality in three words. God is everything. The new age is being seated. The new myths are beginning to appear. They're using all the same words. To me, what I, if, what I would think about later, why aren't we hearing any of this from our Christian leaders. Thank God for Chuck Smith being with... Chuck Smith doesn't really know me that well, but he knew that there was something wrong with what's going on, and he was willing to let me come and tell my story. It's not the Warren Smith story. It's the story of deception. It's the story that starts off in Genesis 3. Hath God said... Hath God said that the cross... Something happened on the cross? Doesn't God have new revelation? You need to understand that you are as God. It's the same old lie in new snakeskins, but it doesn't help when people like Rick Warren say it's, entire, it's helpful to know that Satan is entirely predictable. 
This is extraordinarily deceptive stuff because there's a spirit world seducing spirits, 1 Timothy 4, 1. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What is the course of miracles? A seducing spirit that says it's Jesus, another Jesus that has doctrines of devils. I mean, you read those things and it's like, yeah, okay, you know, I, I got that scripture down. It's a little archaic. No, it's not archaic. It's exactly what's going on. So I think I'm just about out of time, but I, I don't want to leave you with a feeling of, of emptiness or, 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 or feeling bad or anything else because Jesus told us about these things ahead of time. He says, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. That's a course of miracles. That's what I said. I am Christ. You know, I, I said the other night, the Bible was warning me about me. It was pretty humbling when I saw that. It's like, wait a you know. He said, I have told you these things ahead of time, so you won't be offended when these things happen. These guys, Neil Donald Walsh and the rest of them, they want you to doubt your faith. They want you to think that they've got something new. And I'm not sure who Brian McLaren is or Dan Kimball. You know, I know that they all got together you know, with some businessmen a few years back, and I'm not sure what happened in those back rooms, but I don't understand why they think they've got some new take on the gospel. I think people better really pray. And if there's people watching here that just think I'm just way off, I would challenge you to pray and to ask for the truth. Ask God to reveal if there's anything that you're being deceived about. I mentioned the other night, I think one of the ways that we got out of the New Age was because my wife loved truth so much. She, it emanated from her, from her essence. And I think that that was, I think God honors that. He is, you know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He's going to honor that if you're looking for truth. And I would just challenge anybody, anybody out there on the internet, it's too easy to just dismiss speakers like me, you know, oh, he's just, uh, he's just fundamentalist, you know, or whatever. They, all these phrases they're coming up with. And they're doing that in the emerging church. They're starting to talk about fundamentalists. Believe me, there's lots of problems in the world that need to be dealt with. But ask Brian McLaren what he thinks about A Course in Miracles. Ask Dan Kimball. Dan Kimball has a church in Santa Cruz, California. That is the height of New Age activity. I don't see him being too concerned about the fact that Jesus is being blasphemed in A Course in Miracles by a false Jesus. In case you hadn't noticed, there's a false Christ on the world scene. He's moving in. The interesting thing is, is there is already a Christ who's saying he's here, Maitreya, and he dovetails with every teaching of A Course in Miracles and the rest of these. And I'm not saying that Maitreya is the coming Antichrist, but you know what? Why aren't we paying a little attention to him? As I speak, there's a 500-foot bronze statue being erected in northern India to Maitreya. The Dalai Lama is involved in that, and the Dalai Lama is all over the place. When I was going to uh, Calvary Chapel in, in Costa Mesa the other night, we drove by a big sign of the Dalai Lama. Inner peace. What's inner peace? Finding that place within yourself that's God, sharing it with others. At one minute is your function as a New Ager, teaching everyone that they're God. And those who refuse to believe that they're God are expendable in that future if they get there. So contend for the faith. Stay in the love of God. Don't ever doubt the, the, the Holy Bible. It's, it's the only thing you can count on. No matter how good, John will tell you this, no matter how good a teacher he is or no matter how much he loves the Lord, you know, you've got to check everything by the Bible. And that's what, what I love about John is that, you know, he'll be the first one to tell you that. And that's why Paul said that to the Bereans. How many times do you hear Rick Warren? Well, if Rick Warren says it, you have to say, well, Rick, which Bible do I check you by? Which one of the 15 that you use? And do you want me to use the message which says that, which says that uh, as above, so below, uh, in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, which, says, which means that God is in everything? I'll, I'll close with this because it's an important point. The New World Religion, according to Benjamin Krem, who's the way shower for Maitreya, is the concept that God is not only transcendent out there, but he is imminent in you, in each person. Alice Bailey said the same thing. God is not only transcendent, he's imminent. The term as above, so below, according to New Age leaders, means that God is not only transcendent, he's imminent. Robert Schuller in 2003, November, he said, I'm learning something new these days. It's broadening my faith. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. But it, it makes my faith broader than ever. God is not only transcendent, he's imminent. And then Schuller says, yes, God is alive and he is in every single human being. 
When I got to page 88 in Rick Warren's book, when he said, God rules everything, is everywhere, and is in everything, I just hung my head because I knew that I had to write a book. It's like you cannot say that. You cannot do that. Then I went to his foundations manual for Saddleback Church. In talking about the future, it said, God is not only transcendent, he's imminent. His public apologist roared forward and said, imminent is a godly term. And there is a use of it. But do you see the flow here? But this same apologist who does discernment type writings had a book about Harry Potter and the Bible. And in talking about Harry Potter, he said, he used the word imminent, God in everything. He used it the way that the New Age used it to expose Harry Potter, but he switched and flipped it over to the religious thing when Rick Warren was questioned. Now, I'm not saying that Rick would say that God is in everything, but I would say, Rick, why are you saying the same thing that Robert Schuller says and that the whole New Age says? God is not the author of confusion. Clear it up. Get that out of you. Use, why don't you use a good Bible translation instead of the New Century version, which says that God's in everything for Ephesians 4, 6. Be clear. Don't confuse people. Don't mix the terms, because we have all this overlapping language that's really confusing people, and people just don't know. So it's a time to be sober and vigilant. doesn't mean we can't still have a good time and have fellowship, but what a time to be alive. I mean, what a time to... I mean, it's happening right in front of our eyes. We have a false Christ that's moving into the world scene, and I think our Lord is saying, do you care? Does it make any difference to you that all this is going on? You know, or do you want a Christian lifestyle? We have a lot of Christian lifestyling going on. Or do you want to, do you want to get down and maybe really contend for the faith, fight the good fight, hold on to the Word of God, stand fast? You know what? Standing is an amazing concept. If you're in the middle of a raging river, which these teachings are, if you can stand in that raging river and hold on to your faith, that's pretty good. And you know you can't do that by yourself, but you can with the Lord's help. So, again, I thank John for having the conference. I hope when you hear the Course in Miracles mentioned somewhere next time, you'll realize this is not a lightweight thing. This is a serious, serious threat to the church, and I think how we respond is going gonna, is gonna to make a real difference in how we're perceived by the world, and we need to do it in love. We don't need to get angry. We don't need to start fighting people over this or doing weird things. We need to do it in love. Thank you very much.